In Lecture 5 of our General Chemistry module, we're going to talk about chemical kinetics and reaction rates. We'll start first by talking about chemical kinetics and what that means. Before we can even start our discussion of chemical kinetics, we need to address Gibbs free energy, which is the equation that determines if a reaction is spontaneous or not. Now, there are multiple different expressions of Gibbs, and we'll be visiting this topic in later modules. But the Gibbs free energy equation that you'll probably commonly see is this one. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This one's very common, but there are other ones. But as a rule, if the Gibbs free energy is negative, this is going to be a spontaneous reaction. If delta G is equal to zero, this is considered at equilibrium. And lastly, if you've got a positive delta G, you're dealing with something that's going to be non-spontaneous. Before we even begin our discussion of chemical kinetics, we need to determine this one. This first and foremost, is the reaction going to spontaneously occur or not? In terms of chemical mechanisms, these mechanisms are the series of steps that make an overall reaction. A lot of chemical reactions and mechanisms are going to happen in multiple steps, not all at once, which is why there are things such as intermediates, which exist within the course of the reaction, but not in the reactants or the products. Sometimes these can be transition states, but other times they're stable on their own. It just depends on the reaction. The slowest step is what we call the rate determining step because this is going to dictate the overall reaction pace. If you think about runners in a race, and let's say a group of you wanted to run a race together, but you wanted to stay in chat and stay as a group. Well, the pace that you can run at is going to be dictated by whoever the slowest runner in your group is. The, th the same is true for chemical mechanisms. Even though there can be a ton of steps, it's all going to be dependent on whichever one is the slowest. So when you're looking to see what, what the overall reaction rate is going to be, you've got to find the rate determining step. Collision theory is the theory that reaction rate is proportional to the collisions between reacting molecules. A good way to think about this is to think about bouncy balls in a container. The bouncy balls are what the, are what the molecules and the atoms in the container are doing, and they're bouncing on each other and ricocheting on and off. The more collisions occur, the more likely a reaction is going to happen. The Arrhenius equation is given as such. This is a way to measure what the k constant is. A transition state is simply a state is a active complex that happens during the reaction and it's the highest point of a free energy diagram which is listed below on the chart. However, there are times that the transition state is not stable and simply a theoretical. So if I were to draw out a mechanism, so let's say I had a a a and I wanted to react this with B. Well, this would form some sort of a transition state like such. And this isn't stable, so I'm going to go ahead and bracket it and write the symbol for a transition, which is right there. And as this reaction proceeds, eventually it'll go to completion. While it's currently in the active complex listed here, you're going to notice that it's got a higher free energy. So this would be the peak of the graph. And as it sets to the product, this transition right here from reactant to um, product is going to be the overall delta G. However, this is going to be the peak or the hump that it has to get over to get to this point. Note that the jump to the transition state is not calculated for delta or not accounted for in delta G. There are several factors that will affect your reaction rate, starting first with the concentration of reactants. Obviously, if you have a higher concentration of reactants, the likelihood of a collision occurring is going to increase. So if we go back to the bouncy balls in the container, if we add more bouncy balls, the likelihood of them coming into contact with each other is going to be much higher. Temperature is going to affect the reaction rate as well. If you increase the temperature, you're increasing the energy in the system. So back to the bouncy ball example, if I were to shake the container more aggressively, 
that is add more energy to the container, they're going to bounce off each other at a faster rate because they're moving faster through the container. Reaction medium is the, the medium in which the reaction is occurring. So in the case of the container, that would be the air that the bouncy balls are going through. If I were to immerse the entire container and fill it with water, the balls would move slower, thus it's going to be a slower medium. There's going to be fewer collisions for this reason than in air. Lastly, adding a catalyst is going to improve the reaction improve the reaction rate as well. If you remember what a catalyst is, they are substances that increase the reaction rate without themselves being consumed in the reaction. They interact with the reactants either by absorption or through the formation of intermediates, stabilizing them such to reduce the activation energy necessary for the reaction to proceed. If you remember our little graph, a catalyst is going to lower this overall. So you'll see a decline there. So if I were to draw this a little bit differently, so let's say I had a really high activation energy here. A catalyst is going to do the same thing. However, it's going to decrease this overall hump there. So that's a little bit better for you to see. But there's a decrease in the activation energy. So the transition state is going to be easily formed or more easily formed and allow for a more smooth transition. We'll finish up our discussion of kinetics there, and we'll proceed to rate laws. There's a basic rate equation, and that's given below. Now, students will often confuse what rate order is. Take note that it does not match the stoichiometric coefficients, and it has to be determined exponentially. Below are some equations based on rate laws for zero, first, and second order, which are going to be likely the reactions that you see. If you are asked to determine rate order, you're going to likely get a chart with concentrations of products and reactants. And as the concentrations vary, you're going to have to see what the overall result is. If one of the reactants concentration is doubled, but you see an exponential increase, you can likely assume that there's going to be some sort of exponential rate law. However, if the, re if the concentration of a reactant doubles and the subsequent product doubles, that's going to be a linear expression. The most common rate laws, like I mentioned earlier, are going to be zero and first and second. A zero order is going to be at a constant rate and it does not depend on reactant concentrations. The zero order rate law is listed below. It's if you take the concentration of reactant and raise it to the zero power. If you remember, mathematically, anything raised to the zero power is going to be one. Therefore, zero order rate laws are only dependent on the k constant. Therefore, constant rate. First and second order reactions are going to be non-constant and non-linear. This depends on the concentration of the reactants. So a first order is going to be raised to the reactant to the first power, and the second order is going to be raised to the second. There are some other rate laws that are mentioned, but they're not going to be directly tested on the MCAT. These are broken and mixed order reactions. You may get a answer choice that states that the reaction has to be broken or mixed because it's not a first, second, or zero order. However, you will not be asked to explicitly calculate these orders. A broken order is simply one that has a non-integer reaction order. So if you remember what an integer is, it's basically a whole number. So a broken order is going to have some sort of fractional order. Because of this, you're going to see some very interesting effects. Now, this does occur in the natural world, but for the, again, for the purpose of the MCAT, you won't have to run these calculations. The AAMC is not going to expect you to raise things to the half power or to the third power. Mixed order reactions are rates that change with time. So as a reaction proceeds, the rate will change. This is going to lead to some very interesting effects as well, but again, not necessarily explicitly tested. We'll finish our discussion of chemical kinetics there. Please join us in the next lecture as we go over probably the most integral concept in chemical reactions, which is equilibrium.